Hello and welcome to Sentence Diagramming Exercise 21. I hope the assessment on using coordinating conjunctions was successful for you. And now we're going to start using subordinating conjunctions, not just coordinating conjunctions. And we'll start having dependent clauses, not just independent clauses. This is very exciting. Let's get started right away. I hope you did the warm-up already. List the fanboy's words, for and nor, but, or, yet, so. They're also known as coordinating conjunctions. Number two, if the clauses in a, sentence is, in a sentence are coordinate, are they equal in value? Yes, co means with or together in Latin. If one of the clauses in a sentence is subordinate to the other, are they equal in value? No, because sub means under and ordo has to do with order. So under, they're under the other one in order if something is subordinate. The fanboy's words are coordinating conjunctions. A compound sentence uses a coordinating conjunction and contains at least two independent clauses. An independent clause can stand on its own as a complete sentence, because it's independent. It can stand by itself. Number eight, now here's where we start thinking. A dependent clause cannot stand on its own as a complete sentence, in the same way that I, right now, am dependent on the dry erase board to keep me from falling over. I'm leaning against it. Hey, fun fact. In, uh, in Latin, D means down or from, and pend means hang, like a pendant that you might hang around your neck. Um, in, when we diagram, dependent clauses will literally hang down from uh, the main lines of the diagram. They're going from the, uh, they'll literally hang down from the independent clauses. It's like the diagram actually knows what the word dependent means in Latin. Okay, so we're going to do some guided notes now. Going to have to scroll up. So this piece of paper should go, it should be detached from the lesson and should go into your notes. Um, I believe you've got a spare piece of paper for that. Uh, so here are the guided notes on dependent clauses and subordinating conjunctions. Here we go. Fun. Compound sentences are formed by joining two independent clauses together using a comma and a fanboy's word, a.k.a. coordinating conjunction. Oops. Yeah, so now here's where we learn. Not compound, but complex sentences are formed by joining one independent and one dependent or subordinate clause together using a subordinating conjunction. Now, so notice then that there are three kinds of sentences that we can work with now. There are complex sentences, which we're learning about today, compound sentences, which you've been working with, and also simple sentences, the, the kind that, you, that we were writing before we were doing compound sentences. A simple sentence just has one clause in it. So simple, one clause, compound, two independent clauses, complex, one independent and one dependent clause. Okay, and here's a fun fact. Uh, complex sentences are reversible. The dependent clause can be first or second. Here's an example. The sentence, when I was six, comma, I learned to read, could just as easily be It could just as easily be, I learned to read when I was six, with no comma in it. So, what can we say about how to punctuate a complex sentence? Well, when the dependent or subordinate clause comes before the independent clause, oh my gosh, we haven't talked about which one is which. 
when I was six. Could that be a sentence by itself? No. So that must be the dependent clause. I learned to read. Could that be a sentence by itself? Yes, that is the independent clause. And this one, in this one, I learned to read, still independent. When I was six, still dependent. The order doesn't matter. What matters, oh, well, we'll see what matters. What can we say about how to punctuate a complex sentence? Well, when the dependent clause comes before the independent clause, that's when we use a comma. So when the dependent clause comes before the independent clause, join the clauses with a comma. When the dependent or subordinate clause comes after the independent clause, that would be this one, I learned to read when I was six, the comma, I should spell better, is optional. So you could put a comma there if you want to, but you don't need it. There are many, many words that can be subordinating conjunctions. Let's, let's list some. Um, since, because, uh, although, those are dependent conjunctions. Uh, when, the list goes on and on. There's a lot of them. You don't need to memorize them because there's so many. P.S. Please remember that a clause is a phrase or a group of words containing a subject and predicate. There you go. Oh, okay, so in case you're having trouble identifying uh, the subordinating conjunctions, like the subordinating conjunction here is when. In this sentence and in this one, it's when. Okay. Uh, so we're going to erase this, and then we'll do some sentences. This is great. Okay, so here are our directions. Label the parts of each sentence above the appropriate word. Label the part of speech of each word below. Remember to distinguish between coordinating, which we're going to label CC, and subordinating, which we're going to label SC, conjunctions. Yeah, CC and SC. Diagram each sentence. Uh, okay, now, it's going to be important, just as when we were doing compound sentences, it's going to be important to figure out where clauses start and stop. And here's something else that's important. We're always going to work, once we've identified a complex sentence, one with an independent clause and a dependent clause, we're always going to work with the independent clause first, even if it's the second clause in the sentence. So like number one, ever since the pods from outer space arrived, Stephen has been acting strangely. This is a reference to the, any of the Invasion of the Body Snatchers films. Stephen has been acting strangely is the independent clause. Ever since the pods from outer space arrived can't be a sentence all by itself. This is a complex sentence. Here's the independent clause. That's the one we're going to deal with first. Um, no prepositional phrases. Stephen is the subject. Has been acting is the predicate. I hope you can see that. Uh, has been acting what? There's no answer to that question. So there's no direct object. There's also no indirect object. Let's move on to the parts of speech. Stephen is a noun. Has been acting is the verb. Strangely is an no, not an adjective, an adverb. Okay, now we're actually going to go ahead and diagram this independent clause. Okay. Stephen has been acting, subject and predicate, strangely, is the adverb. Now we can work with the dependent clause. First, are there prepositional phrases? Yes. From outer space is a prepositional phrase. 
Now the subject, uh, that's pods, and the predicate is arrived. Okay, um, nope, no direct object, no nothing else for parts of sentence, so let's do parts of speech. Ever since, we can treat that as a single word for now, ever since is the subordinating conjunction. The is an article, pods is a noun. From is a preposition. Outer is an adjective, space is a noun, arrived is a verb. Okay, we did Stephen has been acting strangely already. Okay, let's uh, now, oh, now we're gonna diagram a subordinate conjunction. This is very, very exciting, guys. It goes on a diagonal line connecting the predicate. Excuse me, connecting the predicates. Besties are joined at the hip, Boos are joined at the lip. Not just independent clauses now, but also dependent clauses. Clauses in general are joined at the predicate. Capital E in ever, so we know that that's the first word of the sentence from looking at the diagram. And we need arrived here. Ever since pods arrived, again, the Deep, the subordinating conjunction, excuse me, goes on a diagonal line, a diagonal dotted line connecting the predicates. We've got our subject, pods, our predicate arrived, and then which pods? The pods. What kind of pods are these? These are from space pods. Uh, what kind of space? Outer space. Not to be confused with inner space in which a spaceship is shrunk and injected inside the actor Rick Moranis. Or was it Eddie Murphy? I don't remember. Okay, let's work on number two together. There's gonna to be a lot of starting and stopping in this one. The first thing that you need to do, you should leave me alone now because I don't want any company, is decide and figure out for yourself where does one clause start and the other, where does one clause stop and the other one start? And which clause is independent and which clause is dependent? Okay, I hope you figured out that uh, because I don't want any company cannot be a sentence by itself, and because is the subordinating conjunction. You should leave me alone now is the independent clause. That's where we're going to start. Please start by parenthesizing prepositional phrases and identifying the parts of a sentence, subject, predicate, etc. Play the video again when you're done. Okay, I hope you got you should leave me as the subject, predicate, and direct object. Now, pause the video again, identify the parts of speech. Okay. Um, you is a noun, should leave is a verb, me is a noun, and I think we should actually, like, let's pretend that that alone is not there. That's actually going to be best. So mine says alone, maybe yours doesn't. Uh, you, okay, so you is a noun, should leave is a verb, me is a noun, now is an adverb. Okay, let's, uh, let's diagram it. Pause the video while you diagram this clause, starting with the main line. Okay, I got a little ahead of myself. Here's you as the subject, should leave as the predicate, me as the direct object, and now answers the question when, so it's an adverb. And I got a little carried away. We're gonna do the subordinating conjunction next because, okay, now we're into the second clause. I don't want, we did the subordinating conjunction already. I don't want any company. Please identify uh, any prepositional phrases and parenthesize them. Please label the parts of the sentence. Pause the video till you've got it done. Okay, I hope you recognize that the verb here is gonna be do want, and that nt is gonna be an adverb. I is the subject, do want is the predicate, and what do I want? Company direct object, except that I don't want it because the meaning of the verb is reversed by the adverb. 
Please label the parts of speech at this time. Pause the video if you need to. I is a noun, do want is the verb, not or nt is an adverb, any is an adjective, company is a noun. Okay, please diagram this. I hope you can do the whole thing uh, in one fell swoop, or as my high school chemistry teacher, uh, Mr. Charlie Black, would say, one swell foop, because it's really a pretty straightforward clause at this point. Okay, um, I is the subject, do want is the predicate, nt is an adverb describing the predicate, company is the direct object, any is an adjective describing it. You should leave me now because I don't want any company. Congratulations. Let's see if there's another one here. Ooh, we've got one more task. Why don't you try this on your own? Pause the video for a moment and see if you can do this on your own. Try to write a rule for diagramming subordinating conjunctions. Go for it. Okay, I hope you got this. Subordinating conjunctions go on dotted diagonal lines that link the predicates of the clauses they connect. Which one goes on top, the independent clause or the dependent clause? That's right, it's the independent clause. You learn so fast. Hey, wait a minute. It looks like subordinate clauses are ginormous adverbs. I mean, look at this. We've got a thing coming off of a predicate on a diagonal line. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff. It's a dotted line this time. There's a bunch of stuff attached to it, but something on a diagonal line coming off of a predicate that would be an adverb, and guess what? <laughs> Chicken butt, gotcha. Uh, adverbs answer the question how, when, or why. And subordinating conjunctions are also always going to answer the question how, when, or why. When has Stephen been acting strangely? Ever since the pods from outer space arrived. Why should you leave me alone? Because I don't want any company. They hang down from the predicate of the independent clause. Congratulations!